I'm Andrew Edwards, and you're watching Gear Live. The LG V60 FinQ 5G is a premium phone that's ready to compete with the Samsung Galaxy S20. Similar to the LG V50 and LG G8X from last year, the V60 works with a dual screen case that adds a second display to the phone and also includes a headphone jack with quad DAC, giving it two specific features that set it apart from the competition. In this video, I tell you why this phone is worth considering if you're looking for your next Android device. What is going on tech squad? Andrew Edwards here, editor in chief of gearlive.com. And as I mentioned in this video, we are taking a look at the brand new LG V60 FinQ 5G, the brand new flagship smartphone from LG launching in the spring of 2020. Now LG hasn't announced availability dates or prices yet, but the company did say that the V60 FinQ 5G will cost less than the entry level Samsung Galaxy S20. Now, if you've been following along, you know that the Samsung Galaxy S20 will cost $999.99. Basically, it's a $1,000 phone. And then the S20 Plus is gonna be $1,200, and the S20 Ultra will be $1,400. And that's a very interesting number because the LG V60 matches up quite nicely to the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now again, LG hasn't given a price for the V60 other than that it'll cost less than $1,000. Whether that means it's gonna cost $998 or $250, I can't tell you. But going off the past and last year's LG GX8, which launched at $780, I would imagine, that the V60 will cost between 800 and 900 bucks. Now, regarding that comparison to the Galaxy S20 Ultra, I do have a video coming later this week, taking a closer look and comparing the two. So if you wanna see that one and you're not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below along with the bell notification icon if you wanna be notified when it drops. But without any further ado, let's jump into the main point of this video and that's giving you a look at my top three features of the brand new LG V60 ThinQ 5G. And let's get started with the display. Compared to last year's V50, which had a 6.4 inch display, the V60 has an even larger 6.8 inch OLED full view display. This is LG's largest smartphone display to date. And as you can see, it goes edge to edge with the exception of a small teardrop cutout for the front facing camera. If you're wondering about the aspect ratio, it's 20.5 by nine. And the reason for that is LG told me that 70% of Netflix content is at a 21 by nine aspect ratio, which is why LG is going with the larger aspect ratio on their phones this year. Or at least that's one of the main reasons why they're doing it. Now, all that extra screen real estate does make viewing YouTube videos and Netflix and browsing the internet way more comfortable, and the colors are rich and vibrant. But that said, the phone is also very large, and maneuvering and using the phone with one hand is going to be tricky. Now, even more difficult with one-handed use is going to be using the phone with that dual display case, which also adds in some bulk when carrying it around in your pocket. But on that note, let's talk about that case. That is the second feature of my top three favorite features of the LG V60 ThinQ 5G. The second screen matches the display of the V60 ThinQ itself spec for spec, so everything is the same size and the same quality. Taking advantage of the dual screen does require a small learning curve just to figure out how to use all the features that the second screen affords. But after a couple of minutes, you do start getting used to it. All right, so what can you do with dual screens? Well, for one use case, you can use one display as a virtual customizable game controller, or you can multitask on both screens at the same time, or you can even expand certain apps to take up both screens, sort of like using the whole thing as a tablet. Now, the one caveat to using apps in the whole full screen, dual screen mode, is that there is a fairly large border and hinge between the two displays that will cut content in half when spanning one app across both. So this will obstruct videos and apps in expanded view. So it's definitely not the same kind of seamless experience that you would get on something like the Samsung Galaxy Fold or the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip as it pertains to full screen apps on foldable 
devices. However, when using two separate apps or using the case as a kickstand, you do get utility that you aren't really finding elsewhere. And of course, when you're done using the two screens, you can always just remove that second screen at any time. Now, one item of note regarding that dual screen display, that is actually going to be handled differently depending on the carrier. Now, last year, the majority of carriers bundled in the dual screen at no extra cost, at least during the launch window of last year's LG V50 release. And I imagine a lot of them are gonna do the same, but it's not gonna be guaranteed that the display case is gonna just be bundled in for free for the life of the V60 ThinQ 5G's sales. So if you wanna get that case bundled in with your order, be sure to pick it up soon after launch. All right, moving on to the last major feature, number three in my list of top three favorite features of the LG V60 ThinQ, it has got to be the camera. The majority of recent flagship phones have multiple rear cameras, three cameras, four cameras, or even more in some cases. So at first glance, it's interesting that the LG V60 only has two rear cameras. The setup includes a 13 megapixel wide angle lens and a 64 megapixel standard camera, along with a time of flight sensor for AR and depth sensing applications. You can take photos with the standard camera at the full 64 megapixels, but there's also the option to shoot photos zoomed in at 16 megapixels, which results in a telephoto image using a process called pixel binning, which basically combines a sensor's pixels, but the end result is that you're able to take telephoto pictures without the need for a third telephoto lens. While this method decreases resolution by a factor of four, it improves the camera's performance in low light conditions, and it essentially gives you a wide, ultra wide, and telephoto lens while simultaneously saving room inside the phone. As it pertains to video, the LG V60 can capture 8K footage similar to the Galaxy S20 line of phones, but here on the V60, it's gonna be at 26 frames per second, and the camera can also hit a 10X digital zoom. Around the front of the phone, you have a 10 megapixel front camera, which is great for selfies and which can record in 4K. Now, other features that deserve to be mentioned are the 128 gigabytes of internal storage, which is expandable to two terabytes, the eight gigabytes of RAM, the 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which matches, by the way, the battery on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. And again, it has to be said, the LG V60 has a headphone jack with a 32-bit hi-fi DAC. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there watching still hate on the fact that the headphone jack is missing from just about every other flagship out there, but LG continues to do its thing, not only keeping the headphone jack, but keeping that hi-fi quad DAC built in as well. Pricing and availability on the LG V60 ThinQ will be coming soon from carriers, but again, we do know that the phone will be launching this spring. And again, I also mentioned that it does pair up nicely with the $1,400 Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. A video comparing the two phones will be coming soon. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, if you wanna see that video. And by the way, we've already done a bunch of videos on the Samsung Galaxy S20, taking a look at the camera, taking a look at the phone itself. I will leave links to those videos down in the description below as well as up here in case you wanna check those out. If you wanna hear more about the LG V60 ThinQ 5G when you're on the go, be sure to check out the Geared Up podcast. Geared Up is a show I do each and every week with John Rettinger where we look at the latest in tech, gadgets, and games. We will have much more on the LG V60 ThinQ 5G on our next episode. Any questions you have about this device, please do leave them down in the comments below and I will meet you there for further discussion. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards, and I will catch you in the next video.